Hey guys, this is Malinki. Welcome back to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Today we will talk about transgenic animals. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment, and share my video. So, what are transgenic animals? The animals with the modified genome are called transgenic animals. Suppose you have a cow cow one you want it to make more protein enriched milk and suppose your friend has another cow cow two which makes that protein enriched milk you get that gene from your friend's cow and put it in your cow now your cow is called transgenic cow, transgenic animal and it will also produce protein enriched milk. So foreign gene with desired characteristics is inserted into the animal to modify its DNA. In our example the desired characteristic was to produce more protein enriched milk. Now this gene is passed on to the successive generations. This method is used to improve the genetic traits of the target animals. The transgenic animals are genetically engineered and are hence called as genetically modified organisms or GMOs. The first transgenic animal or first genetically modified organism was engineered in the year 1980. Let's see some methods for creating transgenic animals. First one is DNA microinjection. So this method involves the direct microinjection of a desired gene into the pronucleus of a fertilized ovum. Let's see the diagram first. Okay. So this is the donor mouse. Now we can isolate its fertilized ovum. Suppose it is pregnant and it has the fertilized ovum that we can isolate. And this is the fertilized ovum. In this fertilized ovum, it has two pronucleus. One is from mother and another is from father. In this stage, two pronucleus remain separate in the egg cytoplasm. These are not yet fused. At that time, what you can do? You have the desired gene in your hand. So you have isolated this desired gene from the other organism. And now you put this desired gene in one of the pronucleus. That means it could be from mother or it could be from father. So you insert your desired gene in one of the pronucleus. And how you can inject it? You can inject it by using micro injection method. So now your fertilized ovum contains the desired gene. So you can transfer this embryo to the recipient mouse. Okay. So the manipulated fertilized ovum, that means manipulated means after inserting the desired gene in the pronucleus. So it is transferred into the recipient female. This method is applicable to a variety of species. This is called DNA microinjection. Next process is embryonic stem cell mediated gene transfer. So this method involves prior insertion of the desired gene by homologous recombination into an in vitro culture of embryonic stem cells. Wait, let's see the diagram. So again we have the donor mouse here and this mouse is pregnant so we can isolate the blastocyst stage of the embryo from this donor and 
in this blastocyst these are some embryonic stem cells or es cells so you can isolate these cells from blastocyst and put it in the in vitro culture and you have the desired gene also that you have already isolated from an organism now you mix this desired gene with the embryonic stem cells in this in vitro culture so your desired gene is now injected in the embryonic stem cells then you insert them back in the blastocyst so you inject this modified embryonic stem cells into the blastocyst where in the inner cell mass so actually blastocyst contains two types of cells inner cell mass and another is trophoblast so trophoblast generally produces the extra embryonic part but the inner cell mass these are cells which take part directly in the embryo formation so you insert your modified embryonic stem cells in these inner cell mass so that they can take part directly in embryo formation so your blastocyst is now ready and you transfer this blastocyst to the recipient mouse this is the process these cells that means these embryonic stem cells are then incorporated into the inner cell mass of an embryo at the blastocyst stage of development the blastocyst is transferred into the recipient female the result is a chimeric animal actually in this blastocyst you have put the modified embryonic stem cells in the inner cell mass but all the cells in this inner cell mass do not contain the modified embryonic stem cells some of them are without the foreign gene also that means this blastocyst contains mixed cells some with the foreign dna some without the foreign dna that is called chimeric this method is used for gene inactivation the process is called knockout okay next process retrovirus mediated gene transfer so this method involves gene transfer by means of a viral vector such as retrovirus since retroviruses have the ability to infect the host cell they are used as vectors to transfect the target gene into the animal genome let's see the diagram here we have the donor mouse this is pregnant and we can isolate its embryo at very early stage that is eight cell embryo we can isolate from this donor and now we have the retrovirus where we have already put our gene of interest now we can mix this retrovirus with this eight cell embryo retrovirus will attack the cells and will inject its content in those cells and the desired gene is now inserted in eight cell stage embryo then you can transfer that embryo to the recipient mouse so in this method the desired gene is inserted in vitro at a very early stage embryo eight cell stage and the embryo is then transferred into the recipient female let's talk about the applications of transgenic animals these are used to study normal physiology and development of an animal in transgenic animals a foreign gene is introduced due to which the native gene is altered this facilitates to study its effect on the everyday functions of the body that means after inserting the new gene you can study how the animal behavior is altered next 
it is used to study the role of genes in the development of certain diseases so in this case you can insert a disease causing gene in an animal later you may determine how that gene causes the disease okay it is used in research for the development of medicines for example transgenic models are already prepared for diseases such as alzheimer's and cancer this is used to obtain nutritional supplements so the first transgenic cow was rosy we have made it in 1997 rosy produced milk containing human protein 2.4 g per liter so this milk contains the human alpha lactalbumin and this could be given to babies as an alternative to the natural cow milk next is these are used for testing the safety of vaccines before they are injected into humans this was conventionally done on monkeys so in order to do this you can insert a gene in animal which makes it allergenic then you can test your vaccine if the recombinant animal is okay with the vaccine that means your vaccine works well since your animal is allergenic if it doesn't show any reaction that means the vaccine is safe for all that is all about today's lecture i hope you like the lecture if you want the pdf notes of this topic please check the first pinned comment or the description box thank you